Bye. to our channel. It's just me here today. Well, and Theo. It's, it's the two of us. <laughs> it's Theo's first birthday today, so I yeah. thought, yeah, I thought it might be fun to share his birth story. So I've never done a birth story video before, but I, ow, he's biting me. I love hearing birth stories. Even before I was a mom, I enjoyed it. I don't know, it's just such a special moment. I usually get all emotional. We'll see if I get emotional today when I'm telling it. Probably not, because it has been a year, but we'll see. You ready? We're gonna talk all about the day you were born. Can you blow a kiss? Oh, lots of kisses. Okay, so technically the story would start December 2nd, but for anyone who doesn't know us um, my husband Derek he was away last fall from September to December um, in a totally different province in Canada um, studying for firefighting my due date with Theo was November 29th and that was Derek's last day at school um, it was the day he was supposed to come back home the whole month of November was pretty stressful for us because we didn't know if Derek was gonna make it back home for Theo's birth. But when November 29th hit, I had had multiple, multiple false alarms with lots of contractions being super close together. I sat at four centimeters dilated for like four weeks before he was born and fully a face too. Like I'm not entirely sure how he didn't just fall out. I had multiple false alarms, trips to the hospital, just because I just didn't know. Like it hurt and they were close together and I always got sent back home, which is fine. Um, they always told me, come in if you're not sure. So that's what we did and I always got sent back home. November 29th hit, still no baby. And Derek was home that day and we were so thankful because then he was gonna be home for the entire month of December. Um, and then he didn't have to go back until the end of January, back to school. So I was so thankful because we knew at that point he was gonna be home for, for the birth. So November 29th was the due date. He didn't come. November 30th, still no baby. December 1st, still no baby. <laughs> December 2nd, okay, this is where the story starts. He wants Milky. I'm gonna multitask here because this, this little guy wants Milky. <gasps> Mom life. Multitasking at its finest. December 2nd, I woke up in the morning and I felt, I felt off, but as I said, that wasn't unusual because I was always off for, for like four weeks before he was born. I was having contractions and stuff. So I just kind of got myself to the point that I just, didn't think about it. I figured either my water would like break or I was gonna be in so much pain that I couldn't do anything. So when I woke up in the morning and felt off, I didn't really think anything of it. I went all day, just carried on doing what I always do. So at supper time, I started getting, like they started to hurt more. I started to question whether something was actually happening. And I was messaging my mom and Derek actually had to go to a hockey practice. So he was away at the time and my mom came over and it got to the point where I started to wonder if something was actually happening this time because I mean, I was three days overdue. But I also like, when I had a contraction, it got to the point where I had to like squat. <laughs> I couldn't like stand up and carry on through them anymore. Mom and I questioned whether or not we should go pick up Derek at the rink, but we didn't. We waited and I said if my water breaks or if they get super close together, then we would go get them. I actually was like, I'm gonna go curl my hair because the last thing I wanted to do was go have a baby and get pictures and stuff and look like a total slob. I specifically remember like curling a piece of hair, setting my straightener down and like sitting on the floor through a contraction because I couldn't stand and continue through them anymore. Thankfully, Derek came back home from hockey and I was like, we, we have to go. Like, we should probably go. They were at this point about five minutes apart. One thing 
that the doctors had told me was that I had a really quick delivery with Bella. I was in the hospital for quite a while before she was born, but I only pushed for 20, just over 20 minutes for my first baby. So they said, you know, if things get intense and I feel like I have to push, then they figured Theo was gonna come really fast. Like we have a 40 minute drive to the hospital from where we live and I did not want to risk having him on the side of the road. Derek and I went together in our vehicle and my mom took Bella to my cousin Robin, shout out to Robin. Uh, she lives in Fredericton, just right near the hospital. So my mom actually took her to Robin because my mom I chose as my second support person. When I had Bella, we did just, just Derek and I were there, but my mom supported me and was there for me the entire third trimester of my pregnancy because Derek was away at school. So I, I had decided that I wanted her to be there when Theo was born. So she took Bella to Robin and then waited for the okay you were staying at the hospital before she came back. And sure enough, I got hooked up to the monitors Ow. Then the nurse came in and checked me after a while and I was six centimeters dilated. So finally got past that four centimeters and she said, yeah, you're not, you're not going anywhere. You're having a baby. So we were so excited. And this was all at like 10 PM on the second. So we told my mom to come, to come back to the hospital. The brain fart moment, what happened after that? Of course, being six centimeters, the nurse asked me if I wanted anything for the pain. At that point, I was doing okay. Like I wasn't feeling miserable. I was myself between contractions. Like I was still talking and smiling and happy and I was like, no, I'm good. I didn't want to have any medication. I had fentanyl when I was in labor with Bella and it was not a good experience for me. I was so high on fentanyl. It was scary. I literally couldn't stay awake. Like it knocked me out. I would wake up briefly for contractions and then I would be just dead to the world until the next contraction hit. After Bella was born, it affected her as well. And it also, I mean, the withdrawal from it was, was terrible. I remember taking a shower after everything was done and I couldn't, like my, I couldn't even stand up because my legs were so shaky and it was just really bad. I went into it this, this time with Theo thinking, I don't want to have to take anything. Epidurals scare the heck out of me. If you've had one and love it, that's awesome. I know that they're perfect for some people, but I just, the thought of not being able to move my legs terrifies me. Of course, if something had happened and I had needed to get one, then I'd reconsider. When they offered me something, I said no. I said, I'm good. Um, if I change my mind, I'll let you know, but I'm, I'm doing good right now. They brought me an exercise ball. That was something that I had enjoyed. I had one at home um, and I used it and I, I enjoyed it. So they brought me one of those. There hit a point and I had to pee. So I was like, I need to get up and go pee. So I had a contraction, got that done with, and then I went and used the bathroom. And it was like, it was like something just flipped a switch after that because all of a sudden everything hurt 10 times worse. It went from like, oh, this hurts, this hurts. And then I was okay to like, Oh my word, I couldn't even lay back anymore. I couldn't sit down. Like the only way I could get through a contraction was to be up on my knees and like leaning forward. At this point, I'd say it was probably pushing 11. And I'm not gonna lie, after this, the rest is sort of a blur because the contractions were coming on so strong, so close together that, you know, the things that are going through your mind is like get through this contraction and then you yeah, kind of just sit and wait for the next one to hit. And I remember the doctors coming in and checking me again and I was eight centimeters. At that point, I don't even think I really would have had time to even get any kind of medication. Maybe I would have, but things just were moving so quick. But I ended up doing the whole thing with nothing, which was great. And it was so good mentally too. I do remember a couple times leaning forward and saying, I can't do this. Like this hurts so bad, I can't do this. And Derek and my mom were always so quick to be like, yes, you can. And one thing my mom had always told me was, you know, you get through a contraction and then you go, I'm never gonna have that one again. And that actually helps because it's true. Once one's finished, you're, you're gonna have more, but you're never gonna have that one again. So that was something she made sure to tell me every time I started to question if I could do it. Um, and that helped a lot. I was eight centimeters and my water hadn't actually broken yet, but it wasn't shortly after that. It was actually 1145. 
I was in the middle of a contraction and I was leaning forward on my knees, leaning forward onto Derek, and I just felt this gush. <laughs> and this isn't something that happened with Bella. When I was in when I was in labor with Bella, they broke my water for me. Derek's arms were there and they got covered in it and I was like, oops. That was 1145. Contractions sucked at this point. Like they were on top of each other. I was in agony and I remember finishing one and she the nurse really wanted to check me again. So I, I leaned back and I couldn't, I couldn't handle laying down when I was having contractions. It hurt, it put too much pressure on my like tailbone. But she told me that I was nine centimeters and if I wanted to try pushing, I could. And I remember going, yes! <laughs> because when I had Bella, pushing was such a relief to the contractions. This was at midnight. Okay, so it went from 11.45, my water broke, and then exactly at 12 o'clock, she said I could start pushing. So with every contraction I had, I would push. 11 minutes, that's it. 11 minutes, 12, 11 a.m., Theo was born. 11 minutes later, I was holding him and he was perfect, eight pounds, six ounces, which is big, like Bella was 6'13", so eight six felt big to me, but oh man, he was just so sweet, so round and so cute and so perfect. I, I did the whole process with no medication, but we knew after Bella was born that I have a tendency to hemorrhage, and so we kind of expected it was gonna happen after he was born as well. Basically, it means that once he was born, my uterus would no longer contract on its own to help deliver the placenta. So I did have to get put on an IV with some oxytocin to help get my uterus going again, to help stop the bleeding and to help to deliver the placenta as well. It was very controlled. When I had Bella, it was kind of frantic and a little bit scary. But after Theo was born, we expected it. We, we knew that was likely going to happen. And it just, it didn't seem scary at all. Like everything just, <laughs> it felt like that's how it was supposed to go. Like it was so controlled. So I was very, very thankful for that. So they did keep me in the delivery room afterwards for quite a while, just to make sure that I was good before they sent me to the maternity ward. Once, you know, they did their checks and I the bleeding yeah. had stopped, like well, not stopped, but calmed right down. Um, they, f they felt comfortable sending me and then I was literally good after that. So when the, oh, this is funny too, I didn't say this. Um, everything happened so quick when I started pushing. Like I said, it was 11 minutes of pushing. The doctor didn't even make it in the room. The nurses ended up, there were two nurses and they delivered Theo. And the doctor came in um, once I had my IV and she was the one that delivered the placenta just because it was kind of a trickier situation. She originally said I didn't have any tearing, but then she's like, oh, just a tiny little one. I'll take it. A little bit's not so bad. And then I, you know, got cleaned up, sent off to the maternity ward, and I was not there very long. Um, they actually, like I said, he was born at midnight. They did my final check at uh, breakfast, so like 8 a.m. They didn't really come in again after that. They let me go home at supper time, which was amazing because Theo, he wasn't even 24 hours old yet, so I did have to bring him back in the following day for his check. Which was fine though. I was like, I would rather do that and be home than have to stay at the hospital. And I get that, you know, sometimes you have to stay at the hospital for longer, but we were doing great and it just didn't feel like I was getting much help there. I think too, when you have more than one baby, they kind of leave you alone a little bit more sometimes. I could be wrong. I don't know. But they, when they asked if it was our first and we said it was our second, they were like, oh, you know what you're doing then. And I mean, Theo was, Theo was nursing great. Um, he was eating good. He was, he was just so happy. He was a happy little baby. He still is. So everything, everything was so good. He's one year old today. I can't believe it. I have too many emotions about it. I feel like Derek's going to watch this and be like, you didn't tell them about this. There's good chance I left out some details, but I told what I remember. Thanks for letting me rant on about my birth story. I wish I had clips for you. Um, we did not YouTube when he was born a year ago. So I don't. I will try to insert some hospital photos though because he is freaking adorable.
thank you for watching this video. It's been so long since we had any content up because life got busy once COVID settled down where we live. But we would like to we would like to get some more videos up for you guys. So if you have any ideas, suggestions, please let us know, comment, um, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. See you guys later. Merry Christmas.